Hi there, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship with a video about mutation testing in Python. Probably the best way to explain what mutation testing is would be to demonstrate some. So I've got a program here that drives a Mars rover over an XY grid that represents the surface of Mars. And we send the rover sequences of instructions. Each character represents one instruction, R to turn the rover to the right, L to turn it to the left, F to make it move forward one square, and B to make it move back one square. So a very, very simple program. If we just take a look at this code here, it's pretty nasty, full of nested if statements and duplication, and I would really like to refactor this. But before I can refactor it, I need to answer a question, which is, if I were to break this code, how soon would I know? For that, we need fast running unit tests. I've got a bunch of unit tests for my Mars Rover here, which I can run. I've got a little, um, I can run it in the ID, but I can also run it from the command line using this little batch file that I've created. So let's just run those unit tests. Okay, and they're all passing. All 17 tests are passing. So all the tests are passing. That must mean that it is safe to refactor. But is it? Just because all the tests are passing, that doesn't necessarily mean that all of the code is being tested. So how could I find out how much of my code is, is really being tested? Well, I could generate a coverage report. So when I run my tests, I could say, look, tell me how much of my code is actually being executed by these tests. So we have that option there. Okay, let's drill down 100% of our Rover file is actually being covered by the tests. So all the tests are passing, all the tests are green. 100% of the Rover code is being executed by the tests. That must mean that all of our code is being tested. Well, not necessarily. Just because a line of code is being executed by a test, that doesn't really mean that it's being tested necessarily. So how could we answer that question? If I broke this code, would any of these tests fail? Well, a simple way to answer that question would be to break the code and run the tests. So this line of code here, for example, where instruction equals R, let's make it not equals there. And I'm going to rerun my tests. And we're going to see what effect that has. No, that should have broken it. Let's try again. Oh, no, failure 17. Okay, they're all failing. Yeah. So... That would suggest to me that if I were to break that line of code, my test would probably catch it. Okay. And what about the next line of code? Well, we've got a Boolean expression here. We could replace that with true, which is another Boolean expression, and then run our tests again and see whether any tests fail this time. Okay. Again, we've got failing tests. Now, what I'm doing here is something called mutation testing. I'm making one change to a line of code, turning equals into not equals or turning a boolean expression into true and then i'm running my test and seeing whether or not my test suite kills that mutant copy of the code so we're mutating the code creating a mutant copy and then seeing if our tests kill the mutant if all the tests if all the tests pass if no tests fail we say that the mutant has survived and that would suggest that line of code or that part of the code might not really be being tested. There might be gaps in our test suite. So we would then go back and expect, inspect the code and look at the tests and go, what else could we add here or change in our tests that would make our tests better at catching errors? So I could do this line by line. Let's just change that back. And I could do the next line, I could replace that E with an empty string, for example. Oops. And again, rerun the test and see if any tests fail there. Again, a couple of tests are failing, so our test suite has killed that mutant. And so on. So what line by line we can work through and build a picture of how much of our code is really being tested by deliberately breaking it, by introducing these mutations. Now, you'll be delighted to hear that I don't have to go through this entire code base one line at a time in order to get that piece of information. There are tools that can do it for us, mutation testing tools. Uh, I've looked at a few for Python. The one that I've been playing with today is called MuttPy. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Pronounce it. Uh, let's take a look at their web page on pypy.org. So 
It's a very, very simple tool. Um, and it's very, very simple to get started with it. We just, it's a one line install. So let's install MuttPy for this project. There we go, brilliant. And we're ready to go, basically. We can use the MuttPy command. There's a little script there that we set up in our environment. And we need to supply two pieces of information. It's as simple as that. Number one, where is the code that we want to mutate? Well, it's in the source folder. That's where our Rover module is. And then the next question is, where are the tests that you want to run? Well, they're in the test folder. And it's as simple as that. So, oops, not test, test, there we go. And it's as simple as that. Where's the code you want me to mutate? It could be you specify an individual Python file or a folder or package, and it'll mutate everything in that package. And similarly with the test, you can run just one test um, file, or you can run all of your tests in a particular folder. And when I run this, it's gonna do what I've just done, one line at a time, doing things like turning equals into not equals, turning greater than into less than or equal to, turning a plus into a minus, replacing a string with an empty string, performing these individual mutations. It'll have a whole bunch of these mutations it knows how to perform, depending on what's in that line of code. <clears throat> and then it'll come back to us basically with some results about how much of our code is really being tested. So let's run that. It is satisfyingly quick. I do like how fast this tool is. Let's just bring that up there and we'll see what's going on. So for each of those mutations, it's telling us what it did, what mutation it uh, performed, and then showing us the code, essentially, what's different, and the delta, um, and then reporting the results at the bottom here. Well, it did 120 mutations in total, so that's probably more than one mutation for each line of code. Um, our test suite killed 113 of them, 94%, but seven of them survived. Seven mutations survived. Let's see if we can find a mutation that survived. So we've got a bunch here that were killed by our test suite. Let's see if we can find, there's one that survived. Okay, uh, interesting, interesting, okay. So this line of code here, so this is when we're moving it backwards while it's facing east. And this is the line of code that was mutated, that was executed by our test. And what it's done here is it's replaced a zero with a one. So let me just explain. Um, the position of our rover is, is stored as, uh, as an array of x, y coordinates. So the first element in the array is the x coordinate, and the second one is the y coordinate. What it's done is essentially replaced the x coordinate with the, um, the index of the y coordinate, turned a zero into a one, which means that oh okay so this is interesting this is interesting uh, the only way i could think this could be passing is if the the x and y coordinates are the same to begin with let's take a look in the tests and see if that is the case let's get rid of my coverage because that's not very helpful let's see if that is the case scroll down so we're, we're going back let's find the test that's the test um, that triggered this, if you like, and, hmm, okay, yeah, so what's happening here is we're substituting, we've got two coordinates that are essentially identical, 5 and 5, x is 5, y is 5. If we were to make them different, that would rule out the possibility of that happening, of them just happening to be the same. So, and I think that's probably the case for all the ones that go forward and all the ones that go back, all of that code. So let's do them all. So rather than 5, 5, how about 5, 4? So we'll end up at 5, 5 if we move forward in the uh, y direction. Let's make this 5, 4. And this time we're moving in the x direction, so y remains 4. Okay, let's make this 5, Four, so if we move backwards in the y direction, we'll end up at three, five, four, we'll end up at four, four if we're going west. And 
five, four. We're going north, going backwards. That means we're actually going to move south. So we should end up one further south. Five, three, five, four. Okay, this should end up as four because we're not actually moving in the y direction when we go east. South. Oh, oops, we should end up at five, five. So I'm just basically subtracting one from y each time. It's as simple as that. Five, five. And last but not least. There. Okay, now let's just double check that these tests pass. So we've got the behavior we need. Okay, all our tests are passing. It's all good to go. So let's mutate again and see if we've closed that gap in our tests. Oops. Off it goes. I do like how fast this is. Wow, okay, right, 120 mutations, our tests killed 120 of them, 100% mutation coverage, which means that I can put a, more faith in these tests. I've gone from 94% sure that if I broke it, I'd know, to 100% sure. Now, you can never be 100% sure, but much closer to 100% here, so more confidence in my tests. Okay, now... Um, the reports that you get at the command line from MuttPy here, just a quick note about this. Um, I find these useful enough, um, but it can also produce other kinds of reports. It can re produce um, this same kind of data, but in a YAML file. So you can reuse that as you see fit. Or it can produce HTML. I didn't find the HTML as useful, um, but um, it can do that as well. Spit out a little website for you with all of your data in that you can scroll through. Um, but I've been using it at the command line and I found it useful enough and certainly very easy to install and very fast. And it seems to work. It found um, it found um, gaps in my test that the other tools I tried didn't find. So that was very interesting. So if you want to have a play with MuttPy or any of the other mutation testing tools um, for um, uh, Python, I think there's one called uh, MuttMutt, which I had a little play with. And there's another one called... Um, uh, begins with a C now, um, Cosmic Rays, uh, Cosmic Ray, I think it's called. So there are other tools available that you can play with. This is what I've been using today, and I it's pretty simple to use. So you can have a play with this one as well. Um, so there you go, that's mutation testing. It is a way of testing your tests to get a feel for how much confidence you should place in them when it comes to changing your code. It's a powerful and useful technique. And uh, one that I hope you can incorporate into your armory of techniques when you're working on your code.